a very good morning welcome you all to ugc nta net preparation for paper 1 that is 2023 batch and today we are starting with a new topic that is higher education system this is first lecture which will be consisting of mcq series where we'll be seeing all the mcqs for the preparation of the upcoming examination before we go ahead let's quickly have a look exactly what does global online has to offer you so on a eve of a new year first of all a happy new year to everyone we are going to we are going to have a 30% discount wherein you will be getting this offer till 20th or sorry till 5th of jan the contact details are given as follow so you can get in touch with the given de- uh, contact number in order to get the of offer or uh, till the t- to the time till the valid time what exactly do we have in this so basically we have a, a following s- list of series that is for paper 1 2023 batch we have live lectures we have video lectures on all the units we have 60 plus mock test last 10 year question papers that is previous year question papers practice with answer key we have complete notes 4000 plus mcq question bank and you can hurry up to grab this opportunity till 5th of jan where you have 20% off at the same time you'll be having one on one doubt solving session also so after 20% off this entire package course will be given to you at 3600 you can download with the this things with the help of global online app also or you can get in touch with the given contact details the whatsapp details are given on the screen so you can just take a note of it and get in touch with us in case if you are interested to go and check on the app how does things works out so you can go on um, google play store download the app that is global online app you can register yourself with your mobile number once you have registered yourself you will be getting all the access to the page and if you select the course and go for the course you will get get an access to all the units all the theory lectures all the mcqs lectures all the notes with the practice test okay so this is what we have for paper 1 so all those who are appearing for your paper 1 in the upcoming examination can definitely have a look at it and get the things done we also have a paper 2 notes and mcq available that is for paper two we have these following subjects so you can see the subjects on the screen very well in case if you have any concern or any doubt you can please get in touch with us on the given whatsapp number yes good morning everyone i hope everything is very fine and you can hear me very clearly and we can start the session as you all know that the exams are coming nearby it's hardly a month for a preparation so what we have done is we have started with mcqs okay so f- today onwards as you know this is a new batch and i'm going to start with higher education system so today's lecture will be little bit of brush up it's a revision lecture and from tomorrow onwards we'll take some new questions practice questions and we'll start preparing ourselves just a small request to everyone make sure that you have your notepad handy with you so whatever important details are there whatever important points are there you can take note of those points and start preparing yourself very well so here comes the first question for the day as i said it is little bit brush up so i've taken some uh, previous questions only and tomorrow onwards we'll be doing with a proper set of fresh questions so that it will give you amount of uh, confidence as well as you know a start for the new topic so the for question stands over here which of the characteristics of an effective team in an institution in an institution of higher learning so they have given us some characteristics okay so these are the following characteristics and they are saying that which are the following characteristics which are effective team in an institution of higher learning so i'll just read the options the atmosphere tends to be informal in which members of the team are involved there is a lot of discussion in each with sorry in which everyone participates the task of the group is well understood accepted by other group members the members of the group are not afraid of putting forth their ideas and the members of the group avoid disagreement and conflict among themselves so these are some options which are given now apart from those options which are given you are supposed to pick up the characteristics of effective team in higher learning 
so in higher learning what exactly will be the characteristics yes uh, rama chawan the class has already started hira uh, political science if your subject is there but paper 1 is common so you can go with this paper 1 okay and apart from that political science also you can study uh, with the help of the notes you can get in touch with us so right now i'm just waiting for the answer everyone which answer is a correct answer that is option number a option number b option number c or option number d read the question very carefully reading the question is a skill so you should ensure that your question is read very carefully they are talking about the characteristics of effective team so from the given options what do you feel option number a b c d e these are the options and from the given options what do you feel are the characteristics of effective learning yes i'm just waiting for everyone to answer the question so that you can read and answer the question effectively yes i hope everyone is able to read the question uh and waiting for a revert from everyone yes so let's see once again we will discuss and i'll come to the explanation of the answer also yeah okay uh, just giving some time for everyone to answer the questions okay Atanushri very good morning so let's see the answer for this particular question uh it is talking about what it is talking about characteristics of effective team so whenever we talk about team in higher learning education okay so now when we talk about uh, effective team it is option number a that is the atmosphere tends to be informal so the atmosphere in which the team operates it's informal yes there is a lot of discussion which happens the the task is well understood and accepted by the group and at the same time the group members are not afraid of putting forth ideas okay so option number a b c d are the right option now if you have a confu confusion that why option number e is not a right option now see what they are telling in option number e the members of the group avoid disagreement okay so it is not possible wherever there are people wherever there are group members so it's obvious that there will be an agreement uh, sorry there will be a disagreement and there will be a conflict but this can be taken with discussion it can be properly handled so option number e is a uh, odd man out so your right option will be option number a b c d will be a right option is it clear so this is what the first question is all, all about so what we can conclude is the characteristics of team are the atmosphere is informal there is a lot of discussion the group understands the job very well and the members of the group are not afraid of putting their ideas okay so this is how is it, it talks about what it talks about your characteristics of effective uh, institution team in higher learning now let's go to question number second now question number second talks about what helping individuals okay and social group acquire social values contribute to development of what so there is a topic of environmental education and this topic this particular question comes helping individuals so if you are helping individuals and social group in order to acquire some social values or in order to contribute to the development which of the following will stand to be correct is it environmental awareness is it environmental knowledge is it environmental attitude or is it environmental skills so if you are helping a individual and a social group in order to acquire social values contribute to the development what stands to be correct is it environmental awareness environmental knowledge environmental attitude or environmental skill so you are supposed to give me the right answer i hope students are following with me so this is just a first day for the mcq revisions so even if you are not aware of the topics please write and take down so that you know slowly as per the uh, time we can start revising things in detail also so yes if it is talking about individuals and social groups in order to acquire values and contribute development it's basically called as what it is called as environmental attitude now what does environmental attitude stands for this is basically 
the world's first intergovernmental conference which was on environmental education and this topic is there in your syllabus and this topic on this topic this question is based so the topic is what topic is environmental education which was organized by united nation education scientific and cultural organization that is unesco in cooperation with un that is environmental program which was convened at georgia in 1977 and based on this this question is acquired that is environmental attitude is nothing but helping individuals as well as social group in order to acquire knowledge sorry social values and contribute to the development process so this is how it works out okay now let's see this topic of you know let's understand this topic of environmental education in detail so what exactly is the objective of environmental education so this topic comes very you know oftenly so we should be able to understand this topic very well so the name of the topic is what environmental education so what are the objectives of environmental education whether it is the first objective is awareness second is knowledge third is attitude fourth is skills and then we have participation so these are the objectives one by one we will look at the objectives there is one more question based on this so if you understand the topic now you will be able to answer the question in detail very well so when i talk awareness it is you know to help the social group and individual to acquire the awareness with respect to what with respect to environment and the problem okay knowledge talks about what experience related to environment attitude talks about just now we did it talks about the values and feelings with respect to environment and its protection skills talks about what it talks about helping the social groups and individual to acquire the skills in order to solve the environmental problems and then what we have next is participation it indicates active participation of everyone in order to solve the environmental problems so these are the environmental education objectives and you should be aware of these objectives very well okay moving towards the next question question number 3 now on the screen so given below are two statements there is statement 1 and statement 2 so statement 1 talks about ability of an individual or a group implies the components of knowledge skill and experience so this is what it talks about statement 2 willingness of an individual or a group implies the components of confidence commitment and motivation so these are the two statements now in the light of above statements you have to tell which is the most appropriate answer from the given option so both do you feel that statement 1 and statement 2 both are correct with the statement 1 and 2 both are incorrect or statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect or statement 2 sorry 1 is incorrect and 2 is correct so these are the given options and you have to tell that from this given option which statement stands to be right so i'll just read for everyone statement 1 says that ability of an individual or group implies knowledge skills and experience statements 2 says that willingness of an individual or group implies the confidence commitment and motivation so what do you feel the statement which statement is correct or which statement is incorrect i'll wait for a minute to everyone to answer yes lavkush very good morning i hope everyone has read the question so that you can come with the answer for question number 3 on the screen okay so let's see uh, maybe this topic is completely new for you or maybe your revision has not yet started so you can just at least try to answer so that day by day your practice session gets improved and you can ably you can able to appear for your exam with well preparation so let's see yes so if from the given statement both the statement are correct so when we talk about ability of an individual or a group obviously what implies the components of knowledge skill and experience and this willingness is indicating what the confidence commitment and motivation of that specific individual or a specific group so yes from the given statements yes tanushri very correct statement 1 and statement 2 both are correct okay 
let's move towards question number 4 now question number 4 talks about yes kavya saru yes statement 1 is correct right now let's ta uh, talk about question number 4 this is one of your previous year question paper uh, question also so we have two statements again statement 1 says that universities are established by central and state act under 2F of UGC 1956. Okay, this is your statement 1. Now, statement 2 says that deemed to be university is declared by a notification of central government on the advice of UGC under section 3 of UGC Act 1956. So, statement 1 and statement 2, both these statements are given. You have to tell now which statement stands to be true or which statement stands to be correct or which stands to be incorrect. So, read the statements carefully. Hira, yes, your answer is right for question number 3. Now, we have moved to question number 4. So, just concentrate on question number 4, everyone. Uh, Rinku Sachin, is your answer for question number 4 or question 3? Just let me know what exactly you are. Just write the question numbers so it becomes little bit easier to discuss on which question we are speaking. So, statement 1 talks about universities are established under the Act, Central and State Act under 2F. So, I'll explain you what is this. Deemed to be university is declared by the notification of government under the Section 3 of UGC Act 1956. So, which statement stands to be correct or which state option is stands to be correct for question number 4. So, let's see question number 4 now. So, question number 4, option number a that is both statement 1 that yes universities are established under the state and central act under 2F of UGC Act 1956 and statement 2 says that deemed to be universities declared by notification of central government on the advice of UGC under section 3. Yes but some students those who have a doubt with 2F 12B will just quickly have a look because sometimes in detail this question can be asked. So, the UGC provides financial assistance to eligible colleges which comes under section 2F and they are declared fit to receive the central assistance that is grant under section 12B. So, when we talk about 12B uh, and 2F, so 2F basically does what? 2F basically follows the regulations okay, which are set by the UGC. And 12B makes these rules and regulations in order to, you know, make sure that the colleges are eligible for receiving the grants from the central government. So, 2F talks about following the regulation and 12B talks about making the rules and regulations. So, just keep these points in mind. Those said 12, uh, sorry, fourth question, statement 1 is correct, 2 is incorrect, no. Statement 1 is also correct and 2 is also correct. Okay, and I have explained you the difference between 12B and 2F. Fine, now let's go to question number 5. Now, this is a little bit easier question. So, just you can, you know, concentrate well. In which year the union government decided that all the cases pertaining to grants, okay, from public funds to central university, central university and other universities will be referred under UGC commission. So, everyone everything will come under the one head that is UGC, UGC commission. <coughs> <coughs> so, this happened when? In the year 1952, in the year 1953, in the year 1954 or in the year 1956. So, you have to just state the year where everything came under UGC. So, question number 5 on the screen everyone. Which year? Uh, all the cases pertaining to the grant were decided to you know come under the central university uh, as referred by UGC. So it was which year? It was year 52, 53, 54, 56. It's question number 5 everyone. Yes, I am waiting for question number 5 answer everyone. Yes, so question number 5, when it all came under UGC, it was basically what? It was basically in the year 1952, when everything, no, Tanushri, 
it's not 1956 when everything came under the umbrella of UGC it was basically in the year 1952 and the act was formed in the year 1956 so be careful here lot of confusion students have so that's the reason i've added this question okay now Yes, so this is what I, as I said, I have repeated that question of environmental education after a gap, so that you should be able to answer it and recall it very well. So we know that these are the objectives: environmental awareness, environmental knowledge, environmental attitude, and environmental skill. And they have given the examples. So you are supposed to match them. Okay, you are supposed to match them. All those who are talking about the year. So the year is. Nineteen fifty-two. It's nineteen fifty-two. Okay. Yes. Question number six on the screen. You have this question number six as match the following. So, I am waiting for the answer, everyone. Question number six. We have done this question just some time back. Just as again a revision and to make the topic very clear in your mind, I have added this question again, and in the form of match the following. So you have uh, on one hand you have the list of the objectives, on another hand you have the examples. So you are supposed to match them and uh, decide that which objective stands for what. Okay. So let's let's see now. Uh, yes, students are reading maybe the question. So let's see. So when we talk about awareness, environmental awareness, it is to acquire the sensitivity of the total environment. When we talk about the knowledge, it is to gain the experience. That is B is four. When we talk about yes, Tanushri, uh, six question number six, but Tanushri, the answer is option number four. Environmental attitude. It talks about what it talks about the set of values, and environmental skills. It talks about the. Way to solve and to identify and solve the problem. So, op question number six, the right option will be option number one. No, sorry, not option number one, but it is option number four. Okay. See that. So the reason I told you, you have to little bit revise. Then only you will be able to get this questions very well. Okay. Now coming to question number seven, a very easy question, but read the question very carefully and answer. a vital role in human resource development of a country centered on skill manpower productivity and the quality of life is focused on which of the following domain so whether it is professional education formal education lifelong education technical education i'm repeating again a role of human resource development with respect to the skilled manpower productivity and quality of life comes under what which domain professional formal lifelong or technical it comes under which domain question number 7 on the screen everyone yes uh, students those who are maybe some are very new to the class but even if you are not very sure about your revision please start answering so that you will come to know where exactly you are making a mistake and uh, you'll be able to learn out of it so a vital role in human resource development of a country which is centered on skilled manpower productivity and quality of life is basically focused on what it is focused uh rinku sachin what you want me to explain again please give me the question number i'll explain it again okay what topic you want tell me So yes, very good, uh, Tanushri. So basically, a vital role, no, of uh, human resource development is based on what is based on technical education with respect to what with respect to skill, manpower, productivity, and quality of life. So it comes under what? It comes under technical education. Yes, very good. Hira also has answered very well. Uh, Rinku Sachin, please repeat what you want me to explain again. I'll come back to that. Okay. Now, going towards question number eight, which of the following is a residential center for free and creative inquiry into the fundamental themes and problems of life and thought? So they are asking us a residential center. So the options are Dr. Zakir Hussain's Memorial Co Memorial College of Tra College Trust, Sri Lal Bahadur Shastri Rashtriya Sanskrit Vidya Pit, Indian Institution of Advanced Study, and National Assessment and Accreditation. 
council so which of them falls under what a center for free creative inquiry for fundamental themes and problems of life so from the given question which is considered as a residential center for the same yes rinku seventh answer of yours is right seventh question now we are towards the eighth question so just try to answer the eighth one yes for eighth question i'll wait for a minute this is a direct questions you know this are something very factual questions we should be you you should be able to understand here nothing will work out ex, ex, apart from your knowledge about the topic so residential center for free and creative inquiry is basically that is indian institute of advanced study so based on uh, yeah rinku question number 6 i will come that is environmental education point you want no i'll come for that okay so yes it talks about what it talks about indian institute of advanced study so on this lot of question comes you should be able to remember this uh, topic very well okay coming to question number 9th the question number 9 talks about what uh, which of the following has been the aim of education during ancient india so when we talk about ancient india what was the aim whether it was emancipation or liberation it was material development it was fulfillment of vocational needs or it was inculcation of social values which was the main aim of education during ancient india so when we talk about ancient india what was considered as the main aim of uh, you know ancient education eighth answer we have already understood it is option number c it's not a or it's not b it's option number c that is indian institute of advanced study now question number 9th everyone which of the following is the main aim what was the aim of education during ancient india so the options are given to you below that is emancipation material development fulfillment of vocational needs or inculcation of social values what stands to be the main aim <coughs> sorry yes uh, okay very good yes tanushri so the main aim of the education during the ancient india was liberation or the emancipation then another word for that is called as emancipation okay uh rinku sachin that one topic of yours i'll come back when i'm done i'll come back to that don't worry okay now yes here again we have two statement questions statement 1 and statement 2 so statement 1 talks about institutional autonomy guarantees academic freedom so they are tell telling that if the institution has an autonomy it guarantees academic freedom our statement 2 says that academic freedom is not possible without institutional autonomy so which statement is correct which statement is true which statement is false or incorrect so you have to state by the given options which or statements are true with the statement 1 or statement 2 question number 10th on the screen everyone it's about simple statements they have given but they have learned little confusion so let's see yes so when we talk about statement 1 institutional autonomy guarantees academic freedom yes the statement is very true it's correct it's coming to statement 2 academic freedom is not possible without institutional autonomy it means they are telling that if there is no autonomy there will be no freedom which is false now why let's see and uh, let's have a look question number 10 thira it's option number uh, c not a it's option number c so c now statement 1 is very clearly understood that if the institution has an autonomy it will definitely have academic freedom all those institutions which are autonomous in the status they will have you know they will have the academic freedom to carry out their academics on their own but now what is statement 2 talking about academic freedom is not possible without institutional autonomy no in order 
to ensure the freedom of study to teach and determine the research questions academic freedom requires institutional autonomy okay in other words academic freedom is not possible without institutional autonomy it means it is a necessity but not a condition and statement 2 says that it is a condition but no it's not a condition it is just one of the necessity and hence statement 2 stands to be false and statement 1 stands to be true okay now i hope this is very clear with everyone okay coming to question number 11 now question number 11 talks about which statutory body of a university has a power to accord now accord meaning is to grant approval to the program and courses of studies so who has that power who has that authority to grant approval for programs and courses whether it is senate whether it is syndicate whether it is academic council or whether it is board of studies so who has that power from the given who has the power in order to give a approval to the programs or to the courses okay so i hope this answer no i should explain once so i've directly came to the next slide now see the right answer is academic council but let's understand what are all they so when we talk about senate it is an academic an academic senate is nothing but a governing body in some universities and colleges and it is typically the supreme authority for the institution so it means that senate is you know it works as per institution okay now syndicate is nothing but a peer learning which involves small groups academic council is nothing but the main academic body that is called as the principal academic body and sub it is subject to what it is subject to the provisions written in memorandum of association that is the rule book which have you know the responsibility to have you know maintain the standards of education teach train and interdepartmental coordination and research so yes academic council is the one who has a right to give an approval for the program as well as courses yes very good 11th question everyone is aware of it very good okay now question number 12 so question number 12 are statements question so you have to little read little carefully which of the following are the indicators of external accountability external accountability for higher education learning so that is provisional for professional development of teachers utilization pattern of library and technical course resources relevance of courses to the societal needs performance of students in the public examination employment pattern of pass out students so you are they are talking about what indicators of external accountability so if you are talking about external accountability from the given which will be the indicators professional development or the library pattern or the courses or the performance of the students or the employment pattern which will be the right answer question number 12 everyone on the screen yes i'll wait for the right answer you have to choose the correct option from the given below yes let's come to the answer part so yes when we are talking about external indicators external indicators include does not include professional development it about teachers it is the institution's responsibility not the uh, responsibility you know uh, it's not an accountability okay yes it uh, pattern of library that also is the institution's responsibility relevant courses yes performance of the students yes an employment pattern so these are the external fact indicators for an institution of higher learning so that is courses then it has the performance of students and then it talks about what the employment pattern okay this is question number 12 now moving towards question number 13 now which of the following modality of higher education is an example of evolution in the post independence so which modality that is teacher education technical education legal education or distance education which modality is an example of evolution in the post independence india so from the given 
which indicates you know the modality of higher education as in one of the evolution in the post independence india okay uh, rinku sachin i will just brief you at the end of the class no i will clear your doubt also and the information which you want i'll clear that also okay just we have some questions to go otherwise the link will be distracted no so let's let's have all complete this and i'll clear your doubts fine yes so for question number 13 everyone which of the following modality talks about the evolution in the post independence india that is the answer is right answer is distance education so when we talk about learning modalities they are sensory channels or you can say they are the pathways through which individuals give receive and store information there are four widely accepted learning modalities or you can also called as modalities it means the learning modes it's nothing but it is acronym by the word varc that is visual auditory reading writing and kinesthetic so this is basically an example of what it is an example of uh, evolution in the post independence india that is called as distance education yes very good question number 13 most of you could attend properly now coming to question number 14 in the university education system as prevalent now which of the following bodies or committees look after formal approval of curriculum and courses so now they are asking you what they are asking you the formal approval of curriculum and courses so whether it is executive university executive council or board of management academic council or board of studies or university court so which of them okay in the university education system which body talks about formal approval of curriculum yes question number 13 sorry 14 everyone question number 14 on the screen yes so let's see we have done this similar type of question but still you know i have added one more question like that so let's see the right answer now see if you remember we have done no it is talking about what approval of curriculum and courses so yes we just now started that the approval ha the authority of approval is in the hands of academic council of the concerned university so whichever university yes very good tanushri it is the academic council of the concerned university with regard to approval of curriculum and the courses okay yes now coming to question number 15 now this topic is uh, different but they have mixed up with your higher education so let's understand what is the question and then come to the answer for the introduction of the concept of total quality management in the universities it means that all the universities have a control over the quality education so with that respect which of the following will be considered helpful that is system thinking participatory management rigorous admission procedure or a strength weakness opportunities and challenges including the introduction of skill development program so what it's basically talking about introduction of which concept with respect to tqm now what is the concept of tqm tqm is nothing but the quality management of education in higher learning so for that what will be considered as very helpful whether it is system thinking whether it is participatory management whether it is rigorous admission procedure whether it is uh, the strength weakness opportunity challenges or skill development so you can you know come towards the right option i'll be waiting for the answers yes 14th question is done now we are on 15th question everyone
we are on question number 15th everyone so let's see which the concept of tqm with respect to higher learning is considered helpful for what okay so let's check the answer so basically it is system thinking okay that is in depth thinking participatory management yes admission process will not be a part of quality so option number c wherever you have option number c no in fact it is completely wrong so option number rigorous admission procedure will not maintain the quality c c will not come only introduction of skill development programs yes so if you are still not clear with what is tqm so it is nothing but a perception which educational institutions can attend only see here very well it's only with the help of long planning by the formulation and execution of the program which helps them to achieve their vision see here op and none of the colleges or none of the institutions or you know none of the universities talks about uh, c that is uh, admission procedure does not maintain your quality it is only your uh, system thinking that is uh, yes tanushree 15th a is right okay your detail thinking your participatory management and your skill development program will tell you about what will help you to develop your quality is it clear okay so yes now this was the uh, last question of the day but before any student who is new to the channel or who has attending my lecture for the first time let me give you a brief exactly how we are going to go ahead in this coming days till the time of examination we will be starting uh, we have already started mcq series so these mcq series will be taken by me for all the theory units that is teaching aptitude research aptitude communication ict uh, higher education system people development and environment so i will be taking the six units and for the six units i will be targeting all the mcqs till your time of examination so that it will be better for you to go for a revision and all the new mcqs will keep on coming so this is what we have i have you know targeted till the time of your examination uh, whatever doubts you have whatever concerns you have uh, it will be solved it is not only mcqs every mcq will be explained to you with all the options so this is what i am going to take so anyone who is new to the channel please remember this mcq series will be taken by me that is monday to saturday every day at 10 am in the morning my live classes are on youtube at 10 am so you can be active you can just subscribe the channel in order to get the notification is it clear i hope uh, rinku sachin your doubt is clear now and for you i'll just once again go for the doubt which you had was the objectives of environmental education okay so this is what you had the doubts so please remember there are various objectives that is awareness knowledge attitude skills and participation these are the environmental education objectives so when i say awareness it means you are making your students aware with respect to the environment and its problem when i say knowledge you try to give them the understanding and experience about the knowledge, about the environment and its problem when i say attitude you try to um, set a set of values and feelings in order to motivate them to take care of their environment skills you try to develop those skills which will help them to identify and solve the environmental problems okay and participation which will help them you know which will provide them an opportunity to actively participate in the environmental resolution it means to resolve the environmental problem so this was the question which you are little bit confused in but as per the new topic this educational environmental education is common now so you should be aware of this topic very well okay so yes that's all for the day everyone thank you very much and have a good day ahead once again happy new year to everyone so new year new resolution set your targets and ensure that you are aiming towards cracking your examination tomorrow morning we will be meeting at same time that is 10 am 